Okay, in this video we'll look at the <clears throat> integrals of the natural exponential function e. Now before we get around to the integral rules over here, let's take a quick look at the derivatives once again, just to remind you of those. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and that's if it's just a simple x. If the exponent is something more complicated than just a simple x, then you had to use the two-part rule. So the derivative of e to the u, it would be the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. So that one had a two-part rule. So <clears throat> on to the integrals now. If the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, then the integral of e to the x would also be e to the x. And then don't forget to tack on a plus c. So as it turns out the integral of e to the x is its own original function plus c. Now, the second one looks like this. If it's something more complicated than just a simple x, then you have to use u substitution. So we'll put a little u sub down here on this one. So uh, anything more complicated than just simple x requires u substitution, but it'll still fall into this form. The integral of e to the u will be e to the u plus c. So these will be our two rules. Now, in general, you're going to use the one on the bottom down here because almost all of them involve u substitution. So that's what the rules look like. Now let's look at a few examples and see how to use this. Okay, in this first example, you want to find the integral of e to the 2x minus 1. Now again, it's something more complicated than just a simple x up here, so you're going to have to use u substitution. So right away, we'll go ahead and take off on u substitution on this one, and it will look like this. So we're going to let u be equal to the exponent. So we'll let u be equal to 2x minus 1. Now just u substitution here, so the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to 2, that goes to 0, which gets you to du would be equal to 2 dx. Now in this u substitution, what you're trying to replace is this dx up here. So take the 2 from this side, move it over to this side, and you'd have 1 half du would be equal to dx. So now this dx replaces this dx, and you're going to substitute it for 1 half du. So there's the use substitution right there. And again, we'll go ahead and stick a little box around this thing. And so there's the use substitution right there. Okay, now what that does to the problem, then it turns it into this. This will be equal to the integral of e to the u, and then in place of dx, put what dx is equal to, which is 1 half du. So you've got 1 half du here. <clears throat> now just solve this one. Well, first of all, go ahead and you've got a constant 1 half, so you can bring the constant outside the integral, which gets you to e to the u du. Again, once you get to the integral of e to the u, then you can switch back to your formula, which is the integral of e to the u is equal to e to the u, and then just tack on plus c. So what this is going to be equal to, it would be 1 half, and the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u plus c. And then the final step in the problem is just to replace u with what it's equal to, which is 2x minus 1. So this will become 1 half of e to the 2x minus 1 plus c, and you've got it. So there's the solution. So again, just a u, simple u substitution on this one. And we'll look at a few more examples just to show you some variation. Okay, in this next problem, now again, uh, when you look at it, it's the integral of 3x cubed times e to the minus x to the fourth dx. And the solution here is going to involve u substitution. And in general, you'll do this. A good starting point on these is to let u be equal to the exponent of the e function. And you see later on that won't always work, but in a lot of cases, it's a good starting point. Now, the hint here is this. The derivative of e x to the fourth will get you down to x cubed, so it's a pretty good hint to let u be equal to the exponent up here. Now you can do a couple things with it to start with. Um, first of all, I think I'll do this. The very first step I do is, here's a constant 3, so you can bring it outside the integral. So we'll make this be 3 times the integral of, and I'm going to write it like this. Here is e to the negative x to the fourth, and I'm going to go ahead and take this x cubed and scoot it over here to the right. So this will be x cubed dx. Now the reason I do that is that's the part I'm going to try to get rid of in the u substitution. So my u substitution will look like this. I'll let u be equal to the exponent, and I'm going to try to get rid of this part right here. 
So let's go ahead and do the use substitution first. So first of all, we'll let u be equal to uh, negative x to the fourth. That gets you to du dx. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to um, negative 4x cubed. So it looks like that. Now, um, that gets you to uh, du would be equal to negative 4x cubed and put the dx over here. Now look back, you're trying to get rid of an x cubed dx, and here's an x cubed dx. You don't need the negative 4, so move it to this side. So this will become a negative 1 fourth du would be equal to x cubed dx. So now this matches up with this. There's the use substitution, and you'll substitute this part right here. So again, we'll stick a little box around our u substitution just to isolate it. And there's the u substitution there. So now we'll go back and finish up the problem. Okay, here's the con you've still got the constant three. So there's three times the integral of, and you've got e to the u. And again, in place of x cubed dx, put what it's equal to, which is minus one fourth du. Now, minus one fourth is a constant, so you can bring it outside the integral. So it'll become minus three fourths, um, the integral of e to the u du. Now again, whenever you get an e to the u du, just a reminder uh, that we can go back to the formula, and the integral of e to the u is equal to e to the u. So that gets you to this. Uh, negative three fourths and the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u plus c. And the last step of the problem is to substitute u with what it's equal to, which is the negative of x to the fourth. So you'll have minus 3 fourths e, then minus x to the fourth plus c, and u will be done. So again, uh, look, just another example that involves u substitution where you let the u be equal to the exponent. And we'll try a couple more problems here. Okay, on this one, now sometimes the hard part on these things is actually recognizing um, how you get a u substitution out of this. And the idea is this, is um, I've got an x squared in the denominator here. If I move it up to the numerator, it'll be an x to the minus 2. And if I took the derivative of that, I'd get me to an x to the negative 3, which is a pretty good hint that I can you let, again, u be equal to the exponent on this e function. So what I'm going to do is rewrite it just a little bit where it becomes a little bit more obvious. We'll make this be this. We'll change it to the integral of e to the 1 over x squared. And I'm going to take this and move it off to the side. So it will be 1 over x cubed. Um, and I'll put parentheses around that. Uh, dx. So it looks like this. So all I did there is just take this x cubed on the bottom and scooted it off to the right. And that should be a pretty good hint that uh, we'll let u be equal to the exponent, but I think we'll stick one more step in here where it'll become a little more obvious how to use these. So let's make this be the following. The integral, and since this is an x to the positive 2 in the bottom, let's move it to the top and make it be an x to the negative 2. So this will be the same thing as x to the negative 2. In this one, we'll do the same thing right here. Since this is an x to the positive 3, move it to the top and make it be an x to the negative 3 dx. Now, again, that makes the choice of u a little bit more obvious. So, again, we'll let u be equal to the exponent. So, now that we've got it set up right, let's do the u substitution. So, u would be equal to x to the negative 2 power. So, the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to. Um, bring the negative 2 down, and you get negative 2x to the negative 3, which gets you to the differential of u would be negative 2x to the negative 3 dx. Again, looking over here, you're trying to get rid of this part right here in your u substitution. Uh, x to the negative 3 dx, and here's an x to the negative 3 dx. You don't need the negative 2, so move it to this other side. 
So again, you'll have negative one half du would be equal to x to the negative three dx. And as far as the u substitution goes, here is the x to the negative three dx, which matches up with this. So you can use that and there will be your u substitution right there. So again, we'll isolate this in a little box here. Uh, and there's the u substitution. Okay, now just to finish up the problem. Um, what that will give you is the integral, this will become e to the u, and all of this is gonna be replaced with a negative one half du. Okay, and like before, that's a constant. You can bring the constant to the outside of the integral. So that becomes negative one half the integral of e to the u du. So there's a negative one half. Now remember the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c. And the last step in the problem, replace u with what it's equal to. So you wind up with a negative one half e and in place of u put x to the negative two and then a plus c out here and you are finished. So again, sometimes you've got to manipulate the original function a little bit to get it in a form that makes it easy to take the use substitution up. Okay, let's try another example. Now this example's got some trig in it, but it will also require use substitution. And again, we'll kind of go the same way about this. Uh, we'll let u be equal to the exponent here to try to get rid of this other part. So I'm going to rewrite it, and it's going to require a, the chain rule on this one also. But let's take off and see what we've got. So like always, the first thing I like to do is make it be e to the sine of 2x, and then take this cosine and move it way over here to the right, so this will be times the cosine of 2x dx. So in my use substitution, I'm going to try to get rid of this part right here. And again, to do that by u substitution, the derivative of the sine will give me to the cosine, which should be a hint that u let u be equal to the sine of 2x. So let's do the u substitution then over here. So we'll let u, this time it's got a trig function, let u be equal to the sine of 2x. Now find the derivative. So the derivative of u with respect to x. And again, remember the derivative of the sine is the cosine of 2x, but this is also the chain rule, remember? So you have to take the derivative of what's on the inside, so this thing has to be multiplied times two. So the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. Okay, I'll take this two and move it out in front here, which will get me out of this. du would be equal to, move this two in front, so two times the cosine of 2x, and then here's the dx, I'll put it right here. Now looking back here, I need a cosine of 2x. I don't need this 2, so I'll move the 2 to the other side. So that gives me a 1 half du will be equal to the cosine of 2x dx. So again, this matches up with this up here. So there is my u substitution right there. And like always, we'll isolate this. Okay, so there's the u substitution right there. Now to finish the problem up then, this will turn into the integral of e to the u, and in place of the cosine, put where it's equal to, which is one half du. So we'll put a one half du right there. Again, the one half is a constant, so you can bring it outside the integral. So e to the u du. And as in all the problems, um, the integral of e to the u is e to the u, tack on a plus c. And then you've got one half e in place of u, put what it's equal to, which is the sine of 2x plus c, and you've got it. Okay, now so far, all the problems as we go back through these, you've let u be equal to the exponent of the e function. But that's not always the case, as you're going to see in this next problem. So the next problem looks like this. Um, the integral of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x. 
Now the problem here is this. If you try to let e or u be equal to the exponent, it really doesn't get you anywhere. The derivative of x is 1 and nothing cancels out. So it's a pretty good hint in this case, you're going to have to let u be equal to either e to the x or 1 plus e to the x. Now which one do you let it be equal to? We use the same rule that we used in the past is pick your u so that its derivative gets rid of the other thing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick u to be the denominator of this because the derivative of 1 plus e to the x will be e to the x. But if I let u be equal to what's on top, the derivative of e to the x is not 1 plus e to the x. So what I'll do is rewrite the problem and have it look like this. It'll be the integral. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the line across here. Now I'm going to take this e to the x and move it off to the right. So I have 1 over 1 plus e to the x and take this thing and scoot it off over here, e to the x dx. Now in doing that, as far as the u substitution goes, this is what I'm going to try to get rid of right here. I need to eliminate that. And the way I'll do it is to let u be equal to what's in the denominator down here. So that's going to be my choice of u because the derivative of this will give me this. So let's scoot off the side and we'll do the u substitution. So I'll let u be equal to 1 plus e to the x. Now that means that the derivative of this, the derivative of u with respect to x, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of e to the x, remember, is e to the x. So that gets you to du dx is equal to e to the x. So what that means is that the differential of u would be e to the x dx. <clears throat> now if you look at your problem, you needed an e to the x dx, and you've got an e to the x dx right there. <clears throat> so there's your u substitution right there. So let's go ahead and stick a little box around that thing. Okay, so there's the u substitution right there. Now what we'll replace that with over here, <clears throat> the problem will turn into this. It turns into the integral of 1 over u, and then in place of e to the x, put what it's equal to, which is just du. Well, what this is, is using one of the previous rules that we've talked about, the integral of 1 over u is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then the last step in the problem, replace u with what it's equal to. So this will turn into the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus e to the x plus c. And there is the solution. So just remember, on some of the problems, um, let's go back and look at it. On some of the previous problems, you did this. You let u be equal to... Uh, the exponent of the e function. In fact, of the, four, of the five problems that we worked on, four of them, we let u be equal to the exponent. But there are some problems like this last one where um, if you let u be equal to the exponent, it doesn't get you anywhere. So sometimes it will change from an e to the x problem into a 1 over u problem. So whenever you start with problems that involve e to the x, just let u be equal to whatever it takes to get rid of the other part that you're not interested in. And sometimes it'll turn into a 1 over u problem. So anyway, there's a few indefinite examples using this integral of e to the x. In the next video, we'll look at a couple of definite integrals.